You know, I just was reading, and well, I was listening, of course, because I love that song, but I was reading that uh, Disney, when Elton John sent some of the songs he had for the movie The Lion King, they changed the whole beginning of the movie because of that song, because it was so potent and powerful and tells the whole message of the movie and actually the whole message of all our lives. Ernest Holmes, when he talks about the circle of life, which he does, he talks about the circle being the infinite nature of goodness, the oneness, that everything comes from the first cause. Everything. The first cause, which is God, and infinite possibility. Everything comes from that. I don't care how we walked in here with what joys or troubles we were carrying, what burdens or possibilities we're holding. We all come from that same place. And he calls the circle of life. If you think of the circle, it's that perfection of oneness when it arcs down its spirit being brought into form as matter. So we're spiritual beings having this physical human existence. And then arcing back up is as we leave, we don't have to leave our physical bodies, but we leave the gross materiality of life and get back and connect with our oneness with God. So that's the journey, the circle of life. And we know that's the journey of our soul. It doesn't matter, you know, uh, I think the favorite story of all theologians, and definitely Ernest Holmes, was the prodigal son. That planted inside of every single person is the seed of possibility, the seed of divinity, the knowing that we belong to something so much greater than whatever our experience is. But that seed planted within us has to be discovered for ourselves. We have to discover that seed. And when we discover it, it's because there's a divine urge, that call for something more in all of us. And that call is to get back to that place of oneness. And the mystics tell us that Yes, we're all, every one of us, on a spiral journey upward of eternal evolution, right? We'll all get there. It's just how long it takes is a different story. Some of us, it takes a little bit longer to remember who we really are. Who we really are and what this journey is all about. We love stories of journey. What's your favorite journey story? Do you love The Lion King? Or are you back into more history? Oh, well, I looked up a whole bunch of journey stories and they went on for pages, but the Iliad and the Odyssey from the 8th century BC that tells us about the Trojan War and the journey of all of heroism. This is the 8th century. That was a long time ago. Heroism, human frailties, and the battle between humanity and the supernatural. Sounds familiar. Sounds a little bit like Harry Potter. You know, it's all those stories. I, I was looking at uh, the Wizards of Oz. I mean, that story has been changed and adapted so many times. And don't we all know that story? Every one of it, it unites us. Now, Alice in Wonderland is a little different story. She goes down a rabbit hole. We don't know what was going on in that author's mind. But anyway, um, with all sorts of experiences going on. And of course, high school, The Grapes of Wrath. We have to get that treacherous story of Tom Joad and his family who had to travel from Depression era Oklahoma during uh, the, in the Dust Bowl when there was no money, no food, no work, and traveled across Route 66 to California looking for work, money, and a home or land. I mean, isn't there a bit of us in all of these stories? We're all there and it's all about the journeys that we have to have in this thing called life because we start out as this perfect little essence of spirit and we come here on the road of experience. It didn't say comfort. We're here for the experience of life. There will be pain, but suffering is optional. 
Suffering is not God-ordained. Suffering is when we don't understand the bigger picture. We need a light on our path if we're going to move forward, the road forward. We need a light, and that light can be out there. It can be, we can see it in the things and people and beauty and joy around us, as Marianne was talking about, or it can come from within. And that's the faith we have that no matter what is going on, there's something more at work. There's something greater at work. Now, Ernest Holmes, as I mentioned, loved the story of the prodigal son. But he didn't mince words. You know, he's the guy that said, change your thinking, change your life. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. But he also told it like it is. And on page 468 of the Science of Mind, he talks about the story of the prodigal son. But you know what really... Are there kids in here? Anyway, really got him upset was the stay-at-home son. He didn't like the stay-at-home son. And I'll tell you why. And this is exactly his words. He said, don't be the stay-at-home son. The stay-at-home son real attitude was that God should condemn everything that he did not like or believe in. He was puffed up with self-righteousness and personal conceit, filled with petty vanity and fuming with anger over his brother's welcome home. Listen to this part. I expect that we meet him in ourselves nearly every day, in our personal experiences with other people, in our intolerant attitude and our lack of charity towards others who do not think the way that we do. He got it. And he wasn't afraid to talk about it. He said there is no room for hatred in our world. That's the number one thing we have to, to heal. The younger son had an awakening and came home. We need to do the same. We need to do the same. So, you know, when mystics tell us, they, they, mystics are known because they have a direct line to spirit. Rumi, my favorite mystic, well, one of my favorite mystics, my favorite mystic, said, um, you know, when God asks me, where are you going on this glorious journey? I answered, to your house, of course. He knew that that's where we're all going. He recognized, along with all the other mystic spiritual leaders and most of us, that this journey we're having is like a, oh, just a line, a straight line, a spectrum. We start with our personal experience, our body, our conscious mind, and that's on this end of the line. And on the other end of the line, is God's spirit infinite possibility. There are no obstructions on that line. The heavenly spiritual part is willing to guide us and lead us to the recognition, the knowing, the learning, the inspiration, the realization that we are here to achieve. But we put the barriers in by assumptions, by judgments, by old belief systems that we've either made up ourselves, gotten from our wonderful family who only wanted to teach us what was right and good, but that was all that they knew, or from our culture, from the world, from wherever it is. We put up all the these barriers that keep us from being the open vessel, the absolute spirit's door is always open. We are always welcome to come in. What we have to work on are our barriers. So I'm going to tell you about a little journey Kirk and I had this week, and it was a little journey. It's a little journey that lots of people make every day, but we made it a vacation. We haven't been able to go to, on, to Hawaii, which is our favorite trip that we have lots of memories at. So this year we decided we were going to go someplace else we knew well, and that's Redondo Beach, an hour away. And... Uh, we, Kirk grew up in that area longer than I did, but we went to high school there and lived there, and I taught in the area for almost 20 years, so we know the area. 
so Kirk said, well, what I want to do is I want to be as close to the esplanade as we can, as close to the beach as we can, so I'm going to find a place, location, location, location. So we looked on the Airbnb, and it looked really cute. It was old, but it looked really cute and clean and good. So when we were driving up there, the guy sends us how to get in, and I saw how to get in. I said, Kirk, I think we're going to be staying in a box. <laughs> And I was right. But um, we decided, you walk out the door, a block and there, you're at the beach, and we decided, are we going to make this miserable or are we going to love it? So every day we walked in, we said nice things. I love the water pressure. I love the light in the bathroom. I love the toilet paper. I, uh, it was two-ply. It was great. I loved it. You know, um, there was a basket of goodies on the counter. Now, I didn't bless the goodies or be grateful, but I think Kirk did because I saw a lot of empty wrappers. But anyway, we looked for the good. It was clean. And it was fixed, I mean, they, any mistake or problem or broken thing they fixed. So it was fine. It just didn't have any air <laughs> or, or openings. It was interesting. But it, we made the best. So we were going to have fun. We were going to bike ride. We were going to do fun things. But what happened? We've been working on ourselves a lot, you know, moving up. And of course, every place. You've been to high school someplace, you got memories. We got married there. There are memories. We, you know, always think, the, oh, things you change, things you do different. We went, went around and collected memories and made them meaningful. We went to our high school and we stood out there and we're like, how blessed we are to have been in a school that this beautiful, this big. We talked about the wonderful teachers that were there and just, wow, how blessed we are. We drove up to where we were married. We stood out there in Malaga Cove at this old movie star's home, the neighborhood church. We went, wow, we were married here? All I can remember is those ugly bridesmaids dresses. <laughs> you know, that's where my mind was. We walked around the property, the beautiful ocean view. They had a labyrinth and a little bridge you walked over. We have some pictures. Um, Kirk was way thinner and I was a little rounder, but um, oh, the bridge and they put a waterfall there. We walked around the labyrinth and we were felt so blessed to have that experience and the journey it had taken us on. We were filling ourselves up with such joy where you could, you know, you get to places in your life and the one thing we're sure of is we don't always end up where we expect we're going to be. And you can get to a place in your life where you kind of wonder, how have I done all that I've done and worked so hard and ended up where I am? And we had this four days, that's all, four days. And it was probably the best time I've ever had in my life because we changed memories, but then we rode bikes for three days and we went to um, dinner and we walked and we had played on the, it was just fun. But more than anything, it's about a change in consciousness. If there's one thing I want anyone to take home today on that, on the road forward, sometimes that road forward means we have to go to the past and change the way we think about it. It doesn't mean, yes, we talked about the hardships because, boy, we had hardships during that time, both of us. Yes, we did. We mentioned them, but we didn't marinate in them. We found the gift. We found the blessing. And we are so happy. And we were so happy to come home. And it was so good because we had done our work to get where we are. And we can say, thank you, God, for all of it. Not just some of it, but the whole kit and caboodle. Because it just takes a change in thinking. Now, if we think about how much we love stories of journeys and how they can change and lives can change. So after day three, I said, Kirk, I've ridden on the bike pack. I've walked to, to heaven and back. I'm exhausted. I want to go to the movies. So we said, oh, South Bay Galleria. We saw Jaws there. <laughs> Let's go there. And it was like a one thing movie theater then. Well, 
we go to the um, South Bay Galleria AMC and it's gigantic and it's third story and we go in to get tickets and Okay, I, I wrote this down because this is almost unbelievable. The Lion King was playing at 10.30, no, 9.30, 10, 11, 12, 12, 31, 1.32, 2.33, 4.15, 4.45, 5.15, 6, 6.50, 7.50, 8.30, 9, and 11. Okay, do you think people like journeys? Do you think they want the happy ending? Do you think we can make it? We can. So we're kind of early birds, so we went at the 10.30 a.m. movie. I've never been to a movie that early in my whole life, but it was so fun and good. And it was at a time where we'd done our work. We'd been at the place that Simba was, kind of in the desert of thinking, where you listen to the, you know, the warthog and the meerkat, and they're telling you, oh, you know, this is the way life is. And then you remember because the sky opens. The sky opens and Simba's dad's telling him, remember me and remember who you are. Remember who you are. So my message for us today, I think there was a quote I wanted to read. Uh, oh, yes. How do we all live together? Um, oh, no, there was something else. Um, Rafiki, the, the uh, shaman ba baboon, I love the shaman baboon, says, he said, uh, look beyond what you see. So what right now, what in your life is like a, mm, that you need to see beyond? See something more. Just an offer from a very wise baboon. Um, he also yes, said, yes, the past can hurt, but I'll look at it this way. You can either run from it or learn from it. And that's how you find meaning, is when you learn from it. And then, yeah, Mufasa says, remember who you are, and little Simba said, love always finds a way. And that's where we're going, because Joseph Campbell, who's the amazing mythologist, anthropologist, who talks about the hero's journey, he said the purpose of our entire journey bar none is compassion. That's the purpose. How do we live in unity, which is the goal, getting back to that perfect state, the circle is the oneness. How do we live in unity? Compassion. He went on to say, where you stumble, where we fall, where we forget, where we don't remember, that's where our treasure is. When you fall down, when you're bummed out, when you can't find the good, remember that's where the treasure is. Right, Kirk? <laughs> and he goes on to say, and this one may be my favorite, we must be, must be, must be delighted for others. No matter where we are, if we're on our down spiral and they're on the up spiral, we've got to be delighted for them. We've got to be happy about our brother who comes home so happy and celebrated. Our sister comes home all happy and celebrated when we're feeling low because that's how we keep the circle going. We must be grateful for others if we want to keep the circle of life alive. The, all the great mystics have agreed that man's life is to do with as he chooses. But what then he turn, but when he turns to the one, he will always receive inspiration on high. And I'll have to say, that is a reason that four days in my life turned out to be some of the best, because of looking at the one beyond what is to something more and finding the meaning. So what I'm going to ask of you today is wherever you are, find the good and appreciate it. Look at your memories of your life instead of just moving around like that. Find the meaning and pounce off of them into something more. And the last, the one thing that we know heals is love. So I'm going to ask each of us to make sure we love one another because it's not going to do this world any good. We can't create a world that works if we don't love ourselves and love one another. Are you with me? Yes. All the way? Yes. The circle of life? Yes. Completely around? Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to...
want to give you one last message, and it is Akuna Matata. <laughs> no worries. Be happy. And so it is. God bless each and every one of you. And know how much I love you.